What's up, Trade Hackers? Welcome to today's update. Today is the last day of the month, Tuesday, March 31st, starting with our Trade Hacker question of the day. I thought this was interesting. Someone emailed me and said, what if you currently had no positions on? You're 100% in cash. What would you do right now? And I think that's an interesting question just because I, th I actually think about that sometimes. You know, when I'm, I've got all these positions, I'm managing, I'm adjusting, and I, and I start to think, is this really, and there's the closing bell, uh, I think, is this really where I want my portfolio to be? If I sold everything, if I closed every trade and started over, what would I do right now? And, and for me, I think the way that I would start getting back into trade, start building my portfolio back up is with two main strategies. And we've been doing a lot of them in the community and through the alerts portfolio, but that is uh, the iron duck strategy and double calendars or double diagonals. And the reason I like those two, especially in conjunction with each other, is if you add an iron duck on a down day, your the implied volatility is typically expanding. You're getting further away from money on your downside break even. You have no risk to the upside. So if the market does turn around and rip higher, you have no risk to the upside, but you have a huge downside buffer. On a double calendar, we'll do we like to do these short duration double calendars uh, with you know six, seven, eight days to expiration in the front week, and we make them really wide and they benefit from implied volatility expansion. So uh, if, if the market is up or implied volatility is down, it's a good day to put those on because then you benefit from implied volatility expansion. So keeping your position size super small and on down days, on implied volatility expansion days, adding some iron ducks and on implied volatility contraction days or when the market's going higher, add in some weekly double calendars. Of course, also layering in some short delta as you build that portfolio. So great question. Hopefully that helps. Let's jump into the platform and take a look at what's happening today, starting with uh, the S&P. So the S&P's market just closed. You heard the bell. Future's still going. Uh, future's down 43 points on the S&P, down 400 on the Dow, NASDAQ down 74, Russell down 14. Now, take a look at this range. I mean, we had a range, a high of about 26.35, a low of about 25.58. And so look at the, just you can do it by just eyeball and look at the size of this range, just the size of today's bar compared to everything else for the last month. I mean, we don't have a bar that small on a daily range until you get back here until February 21st. This is the smallest range we've had since February 21st. And if you look at this um, this range, uh, what I say, 26.35 to 25.58, about an 80 point range. I mean, in normal market conditions, I mean, just a month ago, we would have said, that's a huge range, right? When you're, when we're trading back in this area here, I mean, that's a big range, but compared to what we've seen lately, it is the absolute smallest range in the S and P that we've seen by far. And so just interesting. Now, does that mean things are slowing down? Does that mean volatility is subsiding? I wouldn't, I would not bet on that. I would not, don't fall asleep, uh, based on today's small range. In fact, it was a little, it was pretty choppy. I mean, it, the market started off down, then it went up and then it came and now it's come back down uh, later in the day. So it's been a little bit of a wild ride within the range that it's traded, but don't fall asleep thinking that we are going to start seeing smaller ranges because I do not think that is the case. So what did we do today? Well, not much. We added, uh, we sold some premium in the S&Ps and that is about it. If we take a look at some of the other stocks, one stock just had earnings, Restoration Hardware. Now, this isn't a stock that we trade a ton, but it's liquid and it moves. And so, yeah, the earnings was on 320, let's see, 330 after market. Yeah, so it was, it was yesterday after the market. So down almost 15% today. So if this is any indication of what earnings will be looking like, as they start to roll out after the end of the quarter, look out below. But, you know, who knows? We'll, we'll see what happens. But I think there's going to be a lot of bad news. The question is, what's already been priced in, right? I mean, if you look at Apple, for example, Apple comes out uh, 428. So, I mean, that's about a month away. But, you know, the question is, based on 
Apple's projections and their current revenue and revenues from the quarter, how much of this move is already priced in, right? So it's not, I mean, Apple could come out with an outstanding number way below estimates away, but uh, the stock could tank because of just the way the market is trading right now. So be careful with that. Uh, we'll look forward to trading some earnings plays as they start to come out over the next few weeks. Everybody have a great evening. Talk to you tomorrow.